Hi, I'm Vince Brackett. I produce live streams out of Chicago in church and freelance settings. You can hire me or ask any questions by reaching out in the comments and I'll follow up with you. I'm gonna show you a free video follows audio setup for your A10 mini that will auto switch between video inputs based on audio levels. The result will be the A10 mini operating just like any teleconferencing software, so Zoom or Microsoft Teams or WebEx. Uh, whoever starts talking, the A10 mini will automatically switch to that input. There is a really great $50 iOS app called Mix Effect that can give you this functionality, and that has some benefits that I can't recreate with this setup. However, there are also some benefits to my approach that I think might make it a better solution for you. My use case are, is going to be bringing in a remote guest uh, to a live stream, so I'll play the role of host, and my guest uh, will uh, be the second input on the A10 Mini. Uh, so let's see how it works. Uh, we're going to be using a few things. First is the uh, program OBS on our Mac or PC, OBS, Open Broadcast Software. And in particular, we're going to be using one free plugin called the Advanced Scene Switcher. Then we're going to be using uh, something to bring in our remote guest. So Video Ninja, or formerly OBS Ninja, is a free option for this that I'm going to be showing you. But you could use, also use something like Zoom if you have a subscription to that. Then we're gonna be using a virtual audio device, which is gonna allow us to capture the audio from our guest and bring it into our uh, OBS. Uh, the uh, options for that on a Mac are something like VB Cable or Black Hole, which are free options. I'm gonna be using Rogue Amoeba's paid app uh, Loopback, which is uh, really excellent if you uh, have the funds to pay for it. And on PC, there are also lots of options uh, for free virtual audio devices as well. Finally, we're going to be using BitFocus Companion, which is an open source piece of software that extends the functionality of lots of hardware, including the A10 Mini, and it allows you to create custom control interfaces. To use this, you're going to need to have a hardwired ethernet connection to your A10 Mini. Uh, there are links to download these things in uh, the description right now. Uh, and if any of these are new to you or getting these set up in the, in the way that I'm describing is new to you, there are lots of great YouTube videos that explain how to do that and how to get up and running with uh, all of these uh, free solutions. For this tutorial, I'm gonna assume that you have these installed and you have some familiarity with them. So let's see how it works. Essentially, the OBS plugin is going to do all of the work and the other pieces of software here are just to get the A10 Mini to listen to the OBS plugin and do the same. Uh, so I'm gonna take you over to my desktop and we're gonna look at OBS. Uh, you're gonna see the endless tunnel of video here because I'm screen capturing. And what we have here in OBS is I've created two scenes that are identical, host and guest. They're exactly the same. They have the same uh, sources in each of them. You'll see two picture-in-picture -picture sources here that I'm gonna use later for our tutorial, but we don't have to pay attention to those. The important ones here are what we have uh, coming in for video and audio. First, it's the A10 Mini, my video, and uh, right now we're on input one of the A10 Mini to bring in my, uh, uh, or excuse me, right now we're on A10 Mini uh, input two to bring in my computer desktop. Uh, but if I switch to one, you would see me. Hello. Now we're going to go back to the desktop. The next thing that we have is host audio. So that's my microphone, which is under this mixer that I call Zoom Mixer. And then next we're going to bring in guest audio. And that's the last source that we're going to add. And when we add the appropriate device to this, we're going to choose that virtual audio device that we have installed on our computer. I have one that I have named guest audio through Rogue Amoeba's loopback app. But if you have VB cable or black hole or something like that, you would just select that here. All right, we have our two uh, uh, scenes that are absolutely identical set up here. They have the same things. And then what we're gonna do is go up to the tools menu and open up our advanced scene switcher tab. So you'll see here lots of options. The advanced scene switcher can do a ton of things. We're gonna focus on the audio tab. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the advanced scene switcher because that turns this on and we'll need it to be on for it to run later when we demonstrate it. But I'm gonna go up here to the audio label and uh, what you are able to add are logic statements that will uh, affect what OBS does. So what I'm doing here is when I, I'm saying when the volume of guest audio is above 45% for any amount of seconds, I want you to switch to guest using cut. 
So that's just a logic statement. And I'm going to do the same thing for the host audio. When the volume of host audio is above 45% for any number of seconds, I want you to switch to host using cut. And you can see that it's already registering my audio when I speak here on the host audio. All right, so that's all set up and we're going to now have to send guest audio to that virtual audio device. So what we need to do is uh, bring in a guest somehow. I'm gonna do that with Video Ninja because it's free and I can show you that quickly. So I'm gonna bring you over to the Video Ninja control panel and you can see I have a guest down there. That's my friend David who we'll talk to in a moment for our demonstration. And what I can do with Video Ninja is make sure that my settings, if I click down here on my gear wheel, that my audio output from Video Ninja is going to that virtual audio device that I set up. So again, I'm using one that is called Guest Audio to keep it simple for me. And so I'm sending my audio there. Then the next thing I can do is I can use Video Ninja's Electron Capture app on Mac and I can make then David full screen so that if I am on my second input, my extended desktop on my A10 mini, I see David. So if I switch to number one, you see me. If I switch to number two, you see David. And so I'm gonna, David is gonna live on my extended desktop for this uh, demonstration. Now, uh, once I have done that, the last step in the chain is that I'm going to need to get the ATEM Mini to respond to all of these things that I've set up in OBS. And so to do that, we're going to go to the uh, incredible uh, OBS, uh, excuse me, uh, BitFocus Companion. So let me take you over here to BitFocus Companions uh, page and you'll see this uh, the interface here where we have uh, a couple of things. First we see the uh, host button here and a guest button here that I have pre-set up and uh, we'll talk about wh uh, what those are doing in a second but let me take you over to the instances tab in Companion and show you what we're using. So if you've used Companion before uh, you'll know that you are setting up modules for different uh, things that we can uh, control or get feedback from. So we're going to send up, we're going to set up a module for the A10 mini right here. We're going to set up a module for OBS so we can listen to what OBS is doing. And then you're going to see other modules here that I use for my production. But the ones that are important for us here are these last two, Vicrio Variable Listener. They're both the same module, but we've set them up in different ways. So I'll show you what these do here. I'm going to enable them both. And then we're going to go to the configuration tab and take a look at it. The first one here is a host scene. So I'm setting up a Vicrio variable listener uh, module for each scene. The first one is host. And so we want it to uh, listen to the variable OBS scene active. So this is what is the active scene in OBS. And what I want it to do is listen for a, cer a certain thing. I want it to listen for host because this is the one that we are uh, listening for. And when the OBS active scene is host, I want it to I'm gonna click this to press a button. And what button do we want it to press? Well, I'll, when we uh, showed you those buttons before, I had the button for host on page 99, bank 11. And so I have that here. And then I apply the changes. Now we're gonna do look at the second one, which perhaps predictably is gonna be guest scene and the variable it is listening for, again, is the active scene in OBS, and when it sees guest, we want it to press a button, and we want it, in this case, to press page 99, bank 12, which is the guest button. So what are these buttons actually doing? It's pretty simple. First one, the host button, is switching to input one on the ATEM Mini, because that's where I showed you I am. And the guest button is switching to input two, camera two, which is where I have put David. And uh, so these, uh, this is pretty simple. Uh, we're never actually going to press these buttons ourselves. They're going to be pressed virtually by the Vicrio variable listener instances. Uh, you can also uh, alternatively add a little bit uh, of uh, extra functionality to this if you uh, do some macros on your A10 mini and you can set up, a, you, know, you can add a, 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 an, an inst an, a key down action here to uh, run a macro that will put picture in picture for the opposite uh, person. So when I click guest, uh, it will put camera two front and center, but it also have a picture in picture of camera one and vice versa when I hit uh, 
uh, the button for uh, for host or when Vicreo Variable Listener hits the button. So you can do that if you'd like to to add some functionality. All right, with all of that set up, we are ready to see this in action. So uh, I have David again on uh, input two on my A10 Mini. I have me in input one on my A10 Mini, and I have the advanced scene switcher running in OBS. So if David unmutes and begins talking, we're going to see the A10 Mini automatically switch to David. So this is an example of me talking. Fantastic. It worked. And when I talk, it jumps right back to me. Let me show you what this looks like uh, with uh, some extra views here. So you're looking now at uh, the A10 Mini uh, uh, in, in picture in picture, and then you're looking at the audio levels that OBS is sending. So when David speaks one more time, we'll see the audio threshold uh, go past 45% and the A10 Mini switch to input two. Go ahead, David. Absolutely, Vince. Happy to. And there we go. And we see it switch right back to me when my threshold reaches a certain level. So it is working. It's uh, it's it's happening all in the background. And uh, we've done this all for free. We've set it up uh, incredibly without uh, spending any money. Although th uh, there are certainly apps that you can spend on to make it even more functional. Let me tell you uh, a few pros and cons for this. So uh, this versus the $50 mix effect app. Uh, in, in specific. So one pro is obviously that this is free. A second pro is that this works if you are not an iOS user, uh, as MixEffect is only on Apple devices. Another pro is that this runs in the background. If you do this with MixEffect virtual uh, or the video follows audio that they have built in, you have to leave the audio tab of the app it open and in the foreground of your iOS device uh, for that to continue to work on your A10 mini. Some cons to this approach. This requires a computer and software. So if your setup for streaming is using a pro model A10 mini and you don't actually use a computer to stream, this won't help you. You do have to go through a computer and OBS in particular because that's where the video follows audio feature uh, is. Uh, in order for this to work. However, what you could do is still stream through your Pro Model A10 Mini, but uh, run everything through a computer as well, even though you're not using it to stream, just to kick off the automations. Uh, you, a second con is that you have to send your audio sources with this approach to your computer separately. So as I showed you those levels uh, in OBS, OBS is reading my t my audio and David's audio in, in separate instances within OBS. If I were to just uh, have all my audio plugged into my A10 Mini and then take the USB webcam out from the A10 Mini to my computer, OBS would only be able to see any of those channels of audio, no matter what it's coming from, as one input on OBS. So that wouldn't work. I do need to be able to send my audio sources separately to my computer for this to work. If that's not possible for you to send your audio sources separately to your computer, then MixEffect is gonna be the best solution for you. All right, all of this is a free video follows audio solution for your A10 Mini. Again, I am Vince Brackett. I produce live streams out of Chicago in church and freelance settings. You can hire me or ask questions in the comments below.